Well, here's what happened, guys. I got an overload error on the inverter. And now I have no output voltage. Well, as soon as I turn that on. Zero volts. So, turn that back off. Let's just make sure we, it's not shorted or anything. Yeah, it's actually completely open circuit. Let's see, background to neutral. There is a bond in neutral there, so that's good. So presumably that's open as well, so that's fine, I think. So I'm not sure if it blew a fuse or what happened. But I guess we have to take it apart and find out, which is unfortunate, but... Okay. Well, I got the whole inverter taken apart. I do think that I found the problem. But I want to point out a couple things before I get into that. You notice that big thing right there. And then that... solder joint and that solder joint right there is supposed to hold or handle all of your current so that's going through that MOSFET there and that's what that solder joint looks like now as for the actual problem I think it's right there I'm not sure if that got ripped or it's a manufacturing defect, but uh, apparently that blew open, and that's the what's supposed to carry current into your MOSFET. So power comes in here and it goes over. It's also supposed to go this way. So that's probably what's wrong with it. But, so I've got to touch up that solder joint because that's terrible. I can't really zoom in on that, but. Handheld camera work as well. Not the best. Well, I got bad news on this thing. <clears throat> um, it was not just the broken trees here. It was actually a blown MOSFET, which then melted the trace. So, that had to be fixed as well as I have uh, parts on the way. MOSFETs on order because I don't have any actual MOSFETs that I could use for this. Especially not as uh, good a spec ones as they had. They are 40 volt, 200 amp, and 4 milliohms I think is what they were. I've got uh, 40 volt, 280 amp, 2.3 milliohm ones that I've got coming. So, I'm not 100% sure what happened first, but also the resistor that was on the blown MOSFET um, blew. It was no good. It was at like a couple mega ohms or something like 10 megs. And it was supposed to be a 5 ohm resistor. I think they're more or less just using it as a jumper, but... Let's see, maybe that's the other one right there. And then there's one over here too. But one of these MOSFETs was still good. I'm not 100% sure why the other one died to begin with. If the resistor went bad, that could have been, but these were IRF 1404s. As you can see, this one, like I said, is still good. This is the other one that went bad. So, like I said, I'm not. I'm not really that impressed with the inside of this, especially since that hole on the PCB there is pretty bad. There's like no copper on that left. So when I get the new one, I'm just going to have to bend the leg over and melt the solder into it over here. 
And also when I was desoldering these, I unscrewed this one from the heat sink and it was already loose, flopping around. I didn't even touch it with the iron. So that's probably not too good, but these are the heat sinks that they expect to uh, cool that uh, 600 watt load here. Not sure what the efficiency actually is of this at the moment, but you've got that, and this was had the fan stuck right to it. And then this was down on the board there, and then these uh, guys here are attached to the top of the heat sinks, which is okay. Actually a pretty good way of getting power out of your transistor through the, uh, the tab here. That's a pretty good way of doing it, actually. But that's how they drive the uh, alternating poles on the uh, transformer here. This washer is still on there for some reason. Not how I can't sure why that was there, but... Anyhow, the uh, this one here is your output stage. All four of these big old uh, TO forty sevens or whatever they are, two forty sevens. Uh, but that's not on a very good heat sink either. And there is temperature sensors in here. This one right there, and there's one. This one here that was on the input stage. But these go over to the chokes. And I think there's some kind of filter here too, but if you got that. And I'm not sure what this little guy mounted on the heat sink over here is. Not sure what that's actually doing there. It's a little TO220 package down in there. But anyhow, that just wires it there. There's nothing wrong. I checked the control circuitry is all still working, so there's nothing wrong with that. So I think it's all good. And there's your little current sense transformer too, so it can tell if it's overloaded, I would assume. I think that's what that's for. And there's the big uh, filter cap to go along with the chokes. And I guess those are resistors in that. That's what they look like. And that's your diode. It is a 250 volt capacitor, by the way. It's 250 volts at 470. Microfarad, the uh, input caps are 25 volts. So that's worth mentioning. I'm not sure what that little P is, what the brand on that actually is, but 25 volt caps, so that's pretty good. Also, I thought it was kind of funny, I don't know if I mentioned it before or not, but on this positive cable, they actually had two lock washers on the bolts. Okay, then please excuse the mess, but I have actually gotten the parts. So, I haven't even taken them out of the package yet, but... And I'm also going to have to find like a 5 ohm resistor, I think, in order to replace that one. But we'll start with the... Actually, I probably will start with the uh, MOS... Uh, resistors. But... I just want to get this opened up and see what we got in here. This is a giant USD bag. And inside that bag is a tube. A giant tube with four transistors in it. <laughs> but let's see what we got here. I think these pins should just pop out, right? Yep. Let's take a look at one of these. And these are IRF 2804s. Which are pretty high quality. They uh, beat out the specs of what were in it to begin with. So these should be pretty good. For what we need them for. But, I'm gonna put these back in the bag. Apparently, they need that. I don't know, it's funny, I ordered some different MOSFETs, and this is what they come in. <laughs> these are Fairchild ones, but those are for something else. But, 
Now, I gotta find a 5 ohm resistor, I think I'm trying to go ahead, let's try and measure the other one actually, that's still probably okay. Maybe. That's going to look pretty good. This one right here should be... Oops, it's on volts. Yep, right about 5 ohms. I don't know if you can see or not, but it's 4.9 or so. And that's what I thought it would be. I'm not sure if I have a resistor that's 5 ohms, but I do have two 10 ohm resistors, so I can just whack two of those together, but we'll take a look first and see if I have a 5 ohm, because that would be nice if I did. Well, isn't this awesome? I just so happen to have the exact same resistor, which is like 5.2 ohms, I think is what it actually is, but... Exact same color code anyway, it's uh, green, brown, gold, gold is what it is, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this in Okay, here. so now for putting in the transistors, I'm going to, I think the best way to do this is to take the heat sink, put the transistors on it, put the heat sink down into the board, screw that heat sink to the board, and then solder the transistors on I think that's going to be the best way to do it. So, even though they didn't have it from the factory, we are going to put some, uh, heat sink compound on these transistors and I did have to cut one of these legs off of here so that's kind of important because one of these uh, doesn't even have a hole for that leg so you have to cut that one off and the one that does not have the hole for the leg needs the little piece that the temperature sensor goes on reasonably well okay so for putting on these uh, transistors we're going to put uh, a little bit of thermal compound on there. This stuff's not mixed up the best, but we're just gonna get a little on there. It's probably not too important. I even put it on there because I didn't have it on from the factory. Then again, maybe that's why it failed, even though it wasn't even warm. <laughs> wasn't anywhere close to being warm, so that's probably not why it failed, actually. I think it had something to do with that resistor blowing out. Then we'll take our screw and this little metal piece. And this little metal piece is for the temp sensor. In case you're wondering, that's where the temp sensor goes around it. And that actually is where it's reading the temperature from, is right on the tab there. And that is how it came up. Part, so that's how I'm going to put it back together. It probably doesn't really matter if that's bent over because it's just going to have that thing around it. And of course you want your MOSFETs to be tight, which it is, so stick the other one on. Again, same procedure, just a little bit of this paste, kind of try to spread it around some. Speak it on there. Put in the screw. And again, thermal paste, probably not a necessary step, considering that they didn't have it from the factory. Now, I think that this heat sink's bi-directional, so it doesn't actually matter if it is in the wrong way, because it's the same. That bit's probably too small to be doing that, but... It's okay. We've got uh, we got them on there, so it's gonna go in like this. So we're just gonna kind of slip this in underneath. Okay, the, uh, then. So we're ready to test it. We'll see what we get here. 
I get my meter hooked up. Let's see if that little capacitor charge has done anything. Okay, so it's not shorted. Here we go. Thirteen point one volts. Thirteen 